Chapter 9, The Sun, that nearest star to us. Let's uh, first help you out with your study guide, and there are some important um, items to note uh, for, uh, for the study guide. Uh, scientists, astronomers, estimate uh, what the sun looks like on the inside. Um, if this circle uh, represents the visible part of the sun, the part of the sun that glows very brightly up there uh, in the sky for us every day. Uh, this particular uh, region of the sun uh, is given a name, the part that we see, the part where the light seems to originate from, is called the photosphere. Uh, like a photograph, except photosphere. And uh, photosphere uh, means light sphere or the light layer, part of the sun that we see. Beneath this photosphere, and we have some evidence of this, which we'll uh, show you in some pictures, and you'll see in the videos this week. Beneath this layer is another layer. Uh, and in this region, uh, hot gases are rising and falling back down. Uh, and this is very similar to the way we get some type of cloud formations on Earth. Hot air rises, it cools, and condenses into those puffy white clouds, uh, usually on a sunny um, And this region, just beneath the photosphere, um, is referred to as the convection zone because that's where hot gases are rising up uh, at, to the photosphere. Beneath this region, um, is another zone, which I'm just going to go ahead and draw in the center part of the sun. Um, but this region here, uh, where the arrows are, is called the radiation zone. The radiation zone is where energy is radiated, sent out through the sun, uh, through uh, electromagnetic radiation, uh, usually gamma rays and very high energetic, low frequency waves. The very center of the sun um, is referred to as the core, like the core of the apple. This is the core of our sun, and this is where uh, the generation, uh, the heat is generated uh, by the processes of fusion, which we'll talk a little bit about and why we know it's not uh, something else. Outside the photosphere, are two other parts. We, we could say that the photosphere and the parts uh, are the sun's atmosphere. Most of the matter is concentrated, about 50% of the matter is concentrated at the core. It's really pretty small where the core, uh, where the core happens to be. Outside the photosphere um, is a region that's really what, not well defined and is kind of irregular. And um, this region is referred to as the chromosphere. Uh, chromos means, chromo means color. So this is the color sphere, and it's really visible during a total solar eclipse is when that part of the sun can be seen. And there's quite a bit of activity going on in there, but it's much dimmer than the photosphere, and so the photosphere's light blocks Extending beyond the photosphere, extending way into space uh, beyond that, is something called the sun's corona. And the sun's corona extends way into space, even into the depths of the planets. Um, and this is called the sun's corona. And this is uh, referred to as the sun's crown. So starting back at the center is the core. Uh, energy is produced there, radiates. Uh, from that point, but takes a long time to get through the core and out through the radiation zone. Uh, it then begins to make the gases bubble up uh, in the process of convection, uh, and we reach uh, that reach the region where we see the photosphere, uh, the very bright uh, glare of the sun. Above that, we can't see very well normally, is the chromosphere, and then the corona that extends way out 
into the solar system. Uh, the photosphere, uh, by Wien's law, indicates that it's in the 6,000 degrees Celsius range. Uh, for us, that's about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit in the normal temperature ranges. And then the temperature suddenly goes way up as we go out in the corona. Uh, temperature in the corona can be a million degrees. So it's very, very hot in the corona. But uh, it's very thin. And in this case, uh, the temperature indicates speed, not the temperature that you and I could sense, but rather the speed of the particles uh, is the temperature. So temperature is a measure of speed. And so the temperature at the corona is about a million. And it's suspected that the temperature at the core uh, is maybe 20 million degrees Fahrenheit, uh, where the processes of um, nuclear, um, nuclear reactions occur. As we look at the sun through a telescope and with some filtering, we notice that the sun looks like uh, the peel of an orange. It's not smooth, uh, but is rather um, uh, marked up with bright spots uh, and dark spots. And this is at the top of the convection zone. The photosphere is at the top of the convection zone. And movies that you'll see this week, you'll see those convection cells actually uh, moving. Uh, and in the convection cells, they're bright because the hot gases are rising, and the regions that are darker are where the slightly cooler gases are falling down in the sun. So uh, this is the reason that we suspect that the uh, sun is, um, has convection in it. And this uh, pattern we see on the sun is, re is commonly referred to as granulation. Uh, looks like granules of sugar or salt and pepper uh, mixed, uh, uh, all mixed together. And this is the surface of the sun when viewed uh, with some filtration. So we have this view of our sun with the, uh, the photosphere having this um, uneven or, or patterned appearance uh, when, you look through, uh, when you look through filtration. Also, mixed in with this are sunspots. Sunspots are related to the sun's magnetism. And uh, in the granulation, you see these dark regions. Uh, and these sunspots uh, typically have two regions to them. Uh, the darker part uh, takes the same name uh, as the Earth's shadow, uh, or a shadow of an object, the umbra. And the lighter part of the sunspot is called the penumbra. And they can be seen uh, they can be seen in the photosphere. They look darker, they look cooler, but actually they're very, very bright uh, and very hot. And when um, up against the surface of the sun, uh, they take on this darker, darker appearance. They can be seen through filtration as well. So beyond then the sun, right above the photosphere, during an eclipse, uh, you can see this region that looks a little red. Uh, this is the chromosphere, and has uh, characteristically little spikes of gas, uh, hot gases sticking up into it. And these spikes of gases are called spicules. They're columns of gas that rise up uh, above the photosphere into this region that we can't see very well, into uh, the chromosphere region of the sun that extends just immediately photosphere and is only visible during a uh, only visible during a solar eclipse or in certain cases when some telescopes usually those in space can easily produce artificial eclipses this now we have spicules and we have another feature here where uh, this is called a super granule notice that the spicules are somewhat surrounding this this is a larger structure of the Sun where you have granules Many, many granules together, and these, gran and these granules then are surrounded by these tubes or columns of gas that stick up in the chromosphere, and so the regions are called the regions are called um, uh, super granules. Beyond outside this, then is where we see uh, the, um, uh, the really the exterior uh, atmosphere of the sun, the sun's corona, the sun's crown, and you see that these gases are flowing away from the sun, sometimes at very high speeds. Uh, and this is what produces what we call the solar wind. It's a high speed particles 
that are traveling outward from the sun, way out into the planets. And the corona sometimes is very, very spectacular, as it appears in this photograph, and sometimes the corona is not uh, very active at all, and the movies will show you some activities uh, this week to show you how dynamic this is and what uh, what can occur as the sun um, as the sun goes through um, as the sun goes through a, a cycle called the sunspot cycle. Uh, this sunspot cycle is approximately 11 years long, and uh, a period of time that the sun goes through where there are lots of sunspots and then there are not so many. And so it's this cycle, the repeating cycle that we've noticed since about the time of Galileo. And Galileo also was able to show us that the sun is actually rotating. It's a rotating object, um, and it rotates approximately once every two weeks, but it, or four weeks rather, and it also, um, uh, at the same time, does not rotate at the same speed. The equator rotates at... Uh, a different speed than the um, than the poles rotate, and so notice from uh, this graph showing the sunspot cycle, the numbers of sunspots uh, visible on the sun between about 1860 and approximately approximately 2000. So the picture beneath indicates uh, indicates uh, the maximum number, so commonly called solar maximum, when there are many 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 spots. And then uh, some five and a half years later, when there are a few spots, and then the process starts over again where the sun goes through and has lots of spots on it, and then they disappear. And that's what the graph indicates is the sunspot, is the sunspot cycle. There was a time, however, uh, many years in the uh, 17th and early 18th century, where the sun had uh, very few spots on it. And uh, this appear, appears to be a period of inactivity in the sun where there were very few sunspots seen. And this today is referred to as the Maunder minimum uh, for an individual who uh, first, studied this, uh, first studied this phenomenon. Sunspots, um, uh, activity in the chromosphere and activity in the photosphere are caused by uh, magnetism. Uh, the sun has magnetism, and uh, we can detect that magnetism. Uh, there's an example of the sun's magnetic field. looks like an arch, uh, and that arch is, is commonly called a prominence. Uh, the gases follow along the magnetic field, and the magnetic field has been um, popped out of the sun's photosphere and carries gases, uh, carries gases, along it. Uh, and that magnetic field also uh, causes other phenomena. Uh, it causes solar flares. Uh, when uh, some of these prominences break, it causes activity um, in the corona uh, and other effects. This is an x-ray image of the sun. Uh, and notice that there are some gaps in the corona. Uh, in these regions, those are commonly referred to as coronal holes, where there are gaps or missing places uh, in, um, in the sun's corona, uh, directed by magnetism or lack, uh, lack of magnetism. Here's a good example of some magnetic, magnetism occurring um, in the, uh, the uh, coronal region of the sun. Notice that corona uh, in this case, this, this extends out nearly uh, one solar diameter, the diameter of the sun, once uh, as uh, the magnetic field stretches out there. So the, the magnetism creates the solar activity. And this week, we're going to do some live observations or moderately live observations of the sun uh, with a satellite that will show you some of this activity and show you some of this activity across some days in a, another video that we have. So the major features of the sun... Uh, are there? We are certain how the sun, pretty certain how the sun produces energy. Uh, that this activity on the sun is related to uh, its uh, magnetism, and so that is our study for this week. Archive recording has been stopped.